Hi everyone. I'm reading through Deuteronomy this month and in several places you see God highlighting things he wants the Israelites to remember. The Israelites had escaped slavery in Egypt and for 40 years were in the wilderness and they're now about to enter the promised land and conquer nations greater than themselves. And what God wanted them to remember two things. He wanted them to remember his past faithfulness and his past provision and be encouraged because the same God who was with them then is with them now. He also wanted them to not forget how he was going to be with them currently as, he took, as they took possession of the land. So when it is over and they've settled in the land and they, they've settled in their homes, they won't think that they got this and got there by their own strength. But remember that they got there because of God. In this global pandemic, we too must employ this practice of remembrance. Remember God's faithfulness. If you've been a Christian for a while, you've walked through a wilderness with God before. So find ways to repeatedly remind yourself of his faithfulness and his promises that were true then as they are true now. Secondly, encourage your community to watch and see what God will do. We can't shield our children from it within moderation because the news can be overwhelming, but we have to let them be a part of the journey. Know the things that could be causing you to be anxious. Be praying for you. Be praying for themselves. Be praying for the situation and waiting to see what God will do. I remember when I was 14 years old, my parents spoke to my siblings and myself and said that because of the financial crisis in the country, we were about to lose everything. We're going to lose our home. We're going to lose our cars. We're going to lose future funds for college, for school, for clothes. But they wanted us to remember this, that God would be with us and that he is who would provide for us. And over and over again in the years that followed, we saw that despite all the loss that happened, that God was faithful to his promises. And so let your children, let the next generation also be a part of what is happening now so that they can rejoice when they see God answer his, his promises. Don't overlook the grieving. That's the third thing. Those who are grieving loss of a job, loss of an income, opportunity, loss of a loved one, we must remember that even though loss is everywhere right now, each person's loss is significant to them. There are many unhealthy places that persons will go to numb and distract themselves from pain if they don't access God's promises, that he will be there for them, that he heals the brokenhearted, that he feeds the birds of the air, and the same way he will provide for us, that he will never leave them nor forsake them. We need to challenge them to trust God, to wait and see what he will do even through their process of grief and their process of loss. The thing is, we see in Hebrews 8 verse 8 to 12 that unlike God's covenant with the Israelites when he led them out of Egypt and turned away from them because of their unfaithfulness, in the new covenant, because of the work of Christ on the cross, God will forgive our wickedness and will remember our sins no more. When we participate in the sacrament of the Eucharist or breaking of bread, we do this because God wants us to not forget that Christ died for our sins and rose from the dead so that we might have eternal life, a life that starts now, that starts now and continues after our body fails. I'm excited about this time, only because when we have to trust God with everything is when we really get to see his power at work. So let's wait and see.